About a month ago, we were lucky enough to go to Iceland in search of the Northern Lights. And yes, we did see them. They were pretty faint and not really like you see in the photographs, but they were there. I wanted to capture the Northern Lights in watercolour and maybe make them a little bit brighter and funkier than the ones we actually saw. So this is what I've come up with. My name is Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I share tips and tricks that I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week it's about how to paint the Northern Lights and along the way we'll learn about wet and wet, adding details just to suggest what's going on and working with a really limited palette. While I was in Iceland I got given some Renaissance watercolours and I wanted to use them for this painting. But I didn't really have the right colours. The blue and the pink were fine, but I really needed another yellow. So I used this Rosa Oriolin. And I also added in a little bit of very old indigo just to get a real dark. So my palette is indigo, Prussian blue, that Oriolin that mixes to a good green, a little bit of Quin Rose and a little bit of white gouache. So not much, pretty limited. I'm working on a watercolour block, but I have taped the edges so that they're nice and clean when I take that off right at the end. I start by really saturating the surface with clean water. I put that water on both ways to make sure I don't miss a spot. Just take off any excess that's sitting on top of that tape because what you don't want is for it to soak back into the painting as it dries. And then I prop the edge up that's nearest to me just on my reel of tape so that it's slanted away from me. This is important for the flow of colour. It's important to familiarise yourself with your subject. And if you go over to pixabay.com, there's lots of royalty free pictures of the Northern Lights. So using that Prussian blue, I start with a flat brush, brushing in the colour and I want it to be darker at the top of the paper, which is why I've slanted my board. I'm leaving areas of white so we can get the glowing lights showing through, but you can see how the paint is really moving on the surface and some of those whites are disappearing. Don't worry about that because we'll use a clean damp brush to pull them out of the paper. So basically wet your brush, make sure it's clean and then take the excess moisture off and run it through the paint and it will suck that up. Again just be aware of any moisture that's sitting on top of the tape. Now I grab some of that really dark indigo to really give me a beautiful dark night sky and again it's going to be the area at the top of the paper that needs to be at the darkest so that's where I started. I've got time to work wet in wet because I really saturated that paper first but do keep an eye on things if you're working in a particularly warm environment because as soon as it starts to dry you'll need to leave it alone. Don't forget to introduce a little bit of colour into the foreground. Even though it's going to be snow, it certainly won't be whiter than white. So a little bit of that blue in the foreground and later on some of the colours of the northern lights reflected in the snow is a good idea just to get a soft mark. Now northern lights are usually green but I had some of that beautiful quin red which I really wanted to use and you do sometimes see sort of purpley pinky tinges to them so I'm just putting a little bit in here again letting it feather out through the wet paper and make soft marks. I mixed up some green, a really bright green and possibly it's a little bit too yellow so I might add a little bit more blue but this is the colour of my northern lights and I'm dropping it into the white areas to really get a glow. I'm doing all this with a flat brush and I'm sort of twisting it as it goes through so that I get a variety of marks just to emulate those lovely wiggles of the light that you see in the sky. Again, if you feel that you've lost too much of the light, clean off your brush, make sure it's damp rather than wet and wiggle it through the wet wash to lift off more colour. Each time you lift off the colour, make sure it's clean before you go back into it. 
and what this will do is lift off some of the paint and leave pale areas behind. They won't be perfectly white but they will be white enough. Before I started this piece I did a little practice and I used a comb brush to do some lifting out. A comb brush looks as if a mouse has been nibbling at it. You use it for painting things like grass usually but it does lift out little parallel lines which I rather liked. The success of this technique depends on how wet the paper is so you may have to be patient and it will work in some areas better than in others. You can also use the comb brush to actually put paint on so in a moment I will use it to put a little bit more of that really dark indigo just to see if I can get some more sort of feathery vertical marks which seem to be really typical of the Northern Lights. Now once you're happy with what you've done we need to let this dry thoroughly and it will take a while because that paper was pretty saturated. Watercolour always dries lighter so don't be worried if your, your paper looks pretty bright when you leave it to dry. I'm assessing what I like and dislike here. Now it's time to put in stars. I'm going to mask off the bottom and mix up my white gouache until it's like an emulsion. It certainly needs a little bit of extra water added to it otherwise the drops will be too thick. I load up my brush and gently tap it against my finger. I'm aiming for small variegated marks and it's better to start too slow than to do a large splodge with your first tap. It's always easier to add more than it is to take away so just build up the stars gently until you're happy with the effect. And now it's time to think about whether we can disguise that pink area I really don't like. So I'm going to use some dilute indigo and put in some distant mountains. I'm sort of rolling my brush along the paper and this is called dry brushing. It skips certain areas and that makes the mountains look as if they've got a bit of snow on them. That area I want to disguise, I'll just make that slightly stronger. And now it's tree time, so I'm going to use some of that Prussian blue and put some trees in the front and that will also help disguise that pink area. And I just put the trunk in and then do a, a dib damp motion each side of it to give the impression of the branches but to make sure that all the light behind can show through. You really want to leave some air through the branches even though these are conifer trees they've still got to be broken up and not solid so just take your time and put little gentle marks each side look at the direction that the branches grow to make them plausible and we want the trees to join so that they're not just all in a row so we're going to vary the sizes and make sure they overlap. They need some ground to grow on so that's also put in at this point and what you can do is drop in a little bit of colour to that wet tree maybe a little bit of the yellowy green or a little bit of the pink so that there's variation and they're not just the solid blue colour. It's quite easy to get carried away with the trees so you do need to think what you're doing and make sure they balance up your composition and in fact I did get over excited I should have put some middle distance in before I started on these trees so I sort of realise as I get towards the ends of the trees that I have actually forgotten that and I will come back and put in some mid distance ones if you have the opportunity I would do that before you get to this more sort of detailed stage but no need to panic and there's usually a way around these things. This is about the point when I realise that the whole thing is rather out of balance and that I really need a mid distance too. So I grab a mid tone of blue somewhere between those distant mountains and the nearest trees and just use the tip of the brush to imply that there are some trees in that middle distance. They don't need any detail, but they just need a bit of shape. And that really helps, in my opinion, just start to pull the composition together. I make sure that the ends of that middle distance are all merged in so that it doesn't 
look as if I forgot it. A few slightly larger trees on the left are just needed to balance up those ones on the right. They don't need to have much detail, but I use that little sort of dib dab motion just to give the impression of the branches. But again, try not to put in too much detail or get too carried away. And once I'm happy with those trees, I just want to do a little more in the foreground. And I like to have that dry brushing worked for the distant mountains. So I wondered if I use slightly stronger paint and a bit of dry brushing, it would give the impression of some stones under the snow or a little bit of texture. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm bringing some of the colour of the sky and also going to do a few highlights with a little bit of gouache. I thought the nearest trees, you might actually be able to see some snow on them. So now that they're dry, I'm just putting a little bit of gouache to, to give the idea of it getting caught on the branches. I'm trying not to do too much because in the end, it's the northern lights that we're really interested in. And this is the danger point when you can really start to fiddle if you're not careful. So yes, I am adding a little bit here and there in the, the foreground and then just a tiny bit more snow onto those trees. But all the time I'm asking myself whether it's necessary. And that's, this is the nice bit, taking off the tape and you get those lovely clean edges which really focuses you in on the painting. If your tape sticks, warm it with a hairdryer before you take it off and that'll stop it ripping your paper. And I hope you really enjoyed this painting of the Northern Lights done with Polish paints that I got in Iceland. And once again, thank you very much to Lucas at Art Supplies in Reykjavik for introducing me to the Renaissance paints.